history always repeats itself, right? Like I think most people believe that, that the reason you, you study it is to make sure that you don't make the same mistakes again. I don't know that Brett Yormark, the Big 12 commissioner, has studied his history. Because it sounds as if he's open to expansion in a Big 12 that is probably, you could already argue, too big. It stretches from Arizona, Utah, Colorado, to Ohio, West Virginia, and Florida with Texas, Kansas, Oklahoma, Iowa, in between. When Brett Yormark got the job as the Big 12 commissioner, he said, signaled, made no mistake about it, went on the record and said, the Big 12 is open for business. And he said that in an effort basically to say, if you want to join the Big 12, the time is now. We are in expansion mode. And since then, they've added, they've added Cincinnati and South or Central Florida, excuse me, UCF, Cincinnati, UCF, Arizona, Arizona State, Utah, Colorado. Now, those last four are breakaways from a Pac-12 that disintegrated in front of its own eyes and needed a landing spot. And those four schools, I think, make some some big sense to join the Big 12. BYU, by the way. So now the Big 12 is really big, despite losing Texas and Oklahoma. And in an unprompted, in an interview last week, Brett Yormark said, the Big 12 is as open for business as it's ever been. Now, if you can put two and two together there, when you get the job and say the Big 12 is open for business and you add some schools to your conference, now at this point you've added seven schools to your conference since you've been commissioner. And you could argue that by saying the Big 12 is as open for business as it's ever been, that that would mean what? And I don't know who the lot, I guess I do know who the logical dominoes are to fall to the Big 12. I think Brett Yormark is signaling to the ACC schools that aren't Clemson, Florida State, North Carolina. Hey, you want to be, you want to, you want a landing spot? We got you. You need to find somewhere to call home. We got you. Now, the, the problem with that is, is Brett Yormark has already, in the Big 12, has already amassed, and this isn't, necessarily the nicest way to put this and i apologize but it is the reality of the situation you've already amassed like 18 burger king brands you don't have a mcdonald's you don't have a, a, a target or a walmart you got a bunch of burger kings and aldi's a bunch of knockoff brands and, and, and knockoff brands maybe isn't you don't have a shining star. And if you are signaling to the ACC, just because I don't I don't imagine that Brett Yormark is saying like, hey, the Big 12 is open for business. Come on down, Memphis and Tulane. Let's get this done. Like, Or Gonzaga basketball. Okay. Yeah. All right. Whatever. I, I think if you're in expansion mode in 2024, and it's kind of somewhat sad that we are in a spot now where Conference realignment is a never-ending discussion. For better or for worse, I think we are always going to be, for at least the near future, going to be talking about conference realignment and expansion, um, conferences growing or contracting or going away completely. I think we're going to be in that space for a while. But by Brett Yormark signaling, hey, we're open for business as we've ever been, I don't I don't think it's to group of five schools looking to make the jump up to power five because you've you've got that kind of market cornered already. It, who is the premier brand team university in the Big 12? Who is it that installs in you that instills in you, install me, instills in you that this should 100 percent absolutely without question still be 
a Power Four conference. Who is it? Kansas State? Kansas in basketball? Because it's not Baylor, TCU, Houston, UCF, Cincinnati, BYU. Who's the marquee brand in the Big 12? There isn't one. And if you try to be a landing spot for some of the ACC schools, should they jump jump ship? And I think you're looking namely at like Miami, Georgia Tech, Duke, Louisville. What does that do to expand your – like Miami becomes your marquee brand. And I don't know if you've paid attention to college football in the last 22 years – hanging your hat on Miami as your marquee brand ain't going to get it done. So I don't understand the motivation here from the Big 12. It's already gotten too big. You are already working towards the whack that ended up splintering from the whack to the Mountain West back in the day. That the whack got too big for its britches. You're trying to serve too many masters, too diverse of a cons- too, too too diverse of uh, a university slash collegiate group that have differing wants, differing opinions, different needs, and pulling in different directions. Because what's best for Arizona, Arizona State, Utah, Colorado, BYU is not likely to be what's best for West Virginia, Cincinnati, Iowa State, Central Florida. It's it's just not. And so when you're already too big, you're going to add schools that do what for you? Because I'm here to tell you, if they add Georgia Tech, Duke, Miami, because I think it's safe, I feel safe to say Florida State, Clemson, North Carolina are either going to join the SEC or Big Ten. I don't think Florida State is suing the ACC to get out of the conference, to join the Big 12. I just don't think that's reality. You're looking at this second tier, and maybe in Miami's case, a a top tier ACC program. What does that do for the Big 12? It's not going to be a gigantic rights fee increase from ESPN and Fox. It's just not. They're not going to pony up tons of extra dollars for Miami, Georgia Tech, Duke, and Louisville. It just doesn't do a whole lot for you. So you're going to grow the pie, not all that much, shrink the payout for everybody else. And you know what that gets you? Consternation, frustration, anger from your members. Because that's not a better situation than what the ACC has right now. That's not a... Nobody is going to look at that and be like, oh, this is great. This is fantastic. And I don't I don't know how many schools you're going to end up with some sort of split that was like the whack where you're going to have these eight schools split off or 10 schools, 12 schools, whatever the case may be, and leave behind the schools that you don't deem worthy or don't view as helping you gain more money because we are in the financial do- dollars and cents, profit and loss, red and black era of college football for better or worse. All anybody cares about is how do I get more money? How do I get more revenue? And if they feel like somebody is going to cause them to not get as much revenue or all they care about is how do we add people to get more revenue? Adding second tier ACC schools isn't going to get the job done. So I don't know what the, I don't know what the push is from Brett Yormark, and I'm sure that if somebody really held his feet to the fire, we're like, what do you mean by that? And hounded him until he answered the question. He wouldn't say, we're looking at expansion, dumbass. He wouldn't say that because that would be tipping your hand. But I think it's easy to say. You've already tipped your hand. You've already said, hey, here's what's up. Here's what we are thinking, doing, et cetera. Because your past history shows that when you say we're open for business, that means we're on the hunt. And they have done some hunting. So when you say we are uh, open for bit, we we are hunting now more than ever is essentially what he said. Who and what are you hunting for? Because what you should be hunting is for big game. You should be hunting for grizzly bears and moose and elk and lions and elephants and what they're hunting 
or what they're going to come home with appears to be like rabbits and squirrels. And rabbits and squirrels are fine. It's a meal, but it's not going to feed everybody back at camp. So I don't, I don't, I don't know what the idea behind saying we're open for business is because if what it results in is Memphis, Tulane, and Temple joining the Big 12, well, whoop de do. Who cares? And I think you get this tunnel vision of you see where the ACC is now. You see what happened to the Pac-12. And as the commissioner of a Power Four conference, you have to say, how in the hell do I make sure that I don't end up like that? How do I make sure that we don't either die a quick, instantaneous death, or how do I make sure that I can shore up the, the biggest, most prominent folks of our conference still want to be here? And I don't know the answer to that second question, but I'm almost certain that the idea of making sure that we stay viable, we stay our power for status, et cetera, isn't adding either the best of the group of five where you're like, hey, Liberty, <laughs> Tulane, Memphis, Temple, Army, Navy is in the Big 12 now, Air Force, Colorado State, San Diego State joins the Big 12. I, I just don't see how that makes folks that have been together, your Iowa State, Kansas, Kansas State, Oklahoma State, Baylor, TCU, Texas Tech of the worlds that have been together for now 25 years. And in some cases without those uh, Southwest conference schools have been together for a hundred years, 120 years. I, I don't see how adding the remnants of the ACC or the best of the best of the group of five does anything for your conference in the long run. So you're, it appears to me as if, you're working under the guise of, I just need to get as many schools as possible under our umbrella. And if slash when we do that, we're kind of wearing like a Kevlar vest against co conference realignment, right? Because the idea that somebody's going to start a new conference isn't really likely. And then at the same time, if somebody does leave down the line, one, where are they going to go? Because how many schools that are in the Big 12 right now are viable candidates for the SEC or Big Ten. Really, honestly, truthfully, could you see them join the SEC or the Big Ten? Or the SEC or Big Ten wanting them? Maybe Kansas for basketball. You're the Big Ten. That might be it. Maybe West Virginia, if they ever raise their academic status and had a decade-long run of success in both football and basketball. Outside of that, who do you see as a real, truthful, viable Big Ten or SEC candidate? I, I don't. And so, you're kind of fighting this invisible enemy of, I don't, I want to get insurance to ensure that we are not like the Pac-12 that dissolves, or like the ACC where our members are suing us to get away from us. I don't think you have to worry about that. Because right now, in for a, damn near its entire existence, the Big 12 has been a marriage of convenience. And I don't think that's going away really anytime soon. So I, I think it's something to keep your eye on. But if you ask the question, why? Why are you doing this? I don't know that the answer is a good one. That'll do it for today's episode of The Daily Huddle. Appreciate you making us a part of your day, however it is, wherever it is you're doing so. If you are watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you're getting all the great college football content that we are pumping out. If you are listening to the podcast feed, drop a five-star review. It goes a long way in helping out the channel. See you tomorrow for another episode of The Daily Huddle.